Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Sunday morning, early Sunday morning out here. California time is going to be 521 a.m. December 8th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.1 across the area of uh, looks like western Turkey region there in the red flag. Uh, we had a little bit larger movement here just a short time ago with a six-pointer coming into the Japan area. Well, actually off on the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Fairly deep earthquake here. 137 miles deep here, right in the center portion of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Been watching this here for quite a while. Uh, they've been seeing a little series of deep earthquake activity. No major mega quake activity out here yet. It is a region, a major subduction zone that's capable of producing a mega quake. And it's been a little while. I've been watching this area. Uh, for some potential larger movement for quite a while. 6.1 is actually, fair, you know, it's a large earthquake, but fairly minimal compared to what the subduction zone can uh, stir up out here. Uh, in fact, uh, prior to the seven pointer over here across Northern California region, uh, we've seen a pair of deeper earthquakes here across that trench zone. So keep an eye here on both regions today. We may see some larger adjustment back here across California today following uh, the deeper activity it's just the way the plates work out here and um, let's go ahead and check northern california see what we have going on see if they're actually reporting the earthquake activity out here this morning uh, i do see some time gaps here about between about 2 30 and 3 30 in the morning they're claiming that well actually longer than that let's see here yeah, about 225 to 446, over two hours here of uh, no earthquakes. Again, I find that kind of hard to believe here, but it is what it is. Um, there's some of the earthquake activity coming in right now to the Petrolia station. That is earthquake activity out here. Uh, it's not showing up on the Dinsmore station, so these are generally light earthquakes, probably around the one range, maybe 1.5. Uh, nothing being reported, though, in terms of that magnitude. It seems like they've stopped reporting the smaller quakes out here. But we're still getting some movement out here. Uh, according to the USGS, overnight, uh, a couple more threes out there. And again, there's that two-hour two hour window of nothing being reported. It's, it's, just, it's, it's been a trend out here across this area. So we still got the movement stirring up out here in Northern Cal. We've got deeper activity here across the Kuril Kamchatka into the subduction zone. We'll watch both of these regions here today, see if we get an uptick on one of the uh, areas out here. Uh, further out, let's go to the Earthquake 3D globe here, see what we have since uh, this morning's update. Um, some newer activity here across the Himalaya regions westward northwest of Nepal area some deeper activity triggering there into the plate boundary 4.2 that's gonna be this area up here actually off the plate boundary here into eastern Afghanistan 119 miles deep here super deep earthquake into that area of the world uh, but it's been quite active out here across this region uh, the Mediterranean some twos and threes out here it looks like today they still have the 5.2 up there across Iceland. A um, little uncertain on if that was the correct magnitude or not. The uh, Icelandic earthquake folks there were reporting that as a 3.5. Nothing new to report across the Atlantic Ocean. And a uh, typical movement here across the trench zone there, the Middle America Trench and the South America area along the Prucelli Trench. Seen some movement, but still nothing of any abnormal activity. Uh, the states out here. Aside from California, let's go ahead and check out, um, well, let's see what's going on here in Southern California. Looks like things starting to light up in a little cluster here, a little separate region of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Mostly smaller microquake activity out here, but they are reporting. It's weird that they report a lot of the small microquake activity here in Southern California, but not Northern California. You know, you got to remember for every magnitude five there's going to be a number of fours for every magnitude four there's going to be a higher number of threes and so on and um you know as you can see occasionally seems like once every six hours they'll report something under a two-pointer uh, but that's very not very common 
Um, I'm just a little concerned with the reporting here in the last couple days, how they've uh, handled the earthquake activity out here. The seismograph stations out there are there for us to watch. There's another earthquake coming into the uh, Northern California area. This one is showing up on the Dinsmore station. Um, and with that amplitude count right there, probably gonna be about a 2.5 or so. So we'll see if they report this earthquake or not. I don't want to stay up all, you know, be up all night watching the seismograph stations, pointing out all the earthquakes that they're not reporting. It's, there's been a number. Uh, also, just a short time ago, oh, well, there we go. 2.9. I was off a little bit, so I underestimated the uh, magnitude here. At least they reported that. Goodness, it's pretty quick. Uh, 2.9, that is showing up there on the seismograph stations as noted. Uh, some space weather activity to discuss out here. Uh, let's go over here to the Solar Ham site. SolarHam.com is the site for uh, generally some neat space weather links out here and a lot of uh, information here with regards to solar flare and aurora potential. We had an X flare, fairly decent X flare overnight. Um, let's see what the, that's going to be this line right here, peeking up into the X flare category. Take a look and see what the magnitude or the uh, level was X 2.2 from sunspot number 3912. That does look like it's over here on the western limb. I believe it's from this area. Let's see, 3912. Yes, it's going to be right here. So somewhat earth directed. A um, little hard to tell in terms of the complexity here with this um, black and white image. I'm used to the uh, magnetogram here, the colored image, so we can see the complexity of the sunspot, but this has been offline here since the 26th of last month. I don't know when it's going to come back up. Um, so kind of hard to tell uh, in terms of, you know, possibly uh, forecasting the stronger flare activity. It's just, it's super hard to tell. So we just got to go with um, what the percentage is out here right now. There's actually a fairly low percentage in the last couple of days with, you know, 5% chance or probably less of uh, the potential for an X flare. But sure enough, we had one uh, come in here. Looks like Kevin caught it here fairly nicely. X 2.29. There is the solar flare on the UV filter at uh, 0906 UTC time. Uh, there is somewhat of a coronal mass ejection. So far it looks to be heading mostly to the west of the Earth Sun direction here. So. No major roars in the forecast there. And I guess we'll uh, continue to watch that sunspot. If it's going to pop off one X flare, it's got a potential there, maybe doing another one. 3912. Here's a, a little visual, uh, the visible solar disk here. This is actually from yesterday, though. So that's going to be that sunspot region. A couple other sunspots out there as well. But again, complexity wise, it's hard to tell um, exactly you know what the possibilities are here's a little sketch image here I'm really not used to reading the um, uh, this type of chart here so hopefully hopefully they get that uh, magnetogram image back up the uh, this one right here it's very neat and uh, helps identify areas of complexity within sunspot cores like up here at the time this looked fairly complex this is again over almost two weeks old since it went offline all right let's check out uh, anything weather related just general thunderstorm activity out here over the next couple days really nothing of any major severe weather um, activity uh, there's some rain coming in here as we head into early next week a uh, slight chance of severe weather as we head towards the middle of the week here across areas of the eastern portion of the country a lot of colder air coming down behind this frontal boundary interacting with the moist warm air creating that uh, convection band there across uh, the eastern areas of the country after that um, maybe california getting in on some rainfall um, Ooh, i like that that's nice that's a little bit different from last night but uh we'll see we'll have to see some of these weather models here have been flopping back and forth between uh 
a serious dry spell out here in California and then uh, showing some storms coming in. So we'll watch that. I would love for that to happen there. We need some more rainfall here in December. It's our wet month and so far, so far we haven't even had a drop of rain. At least here in uh, December, back in November, we had about seven inches of rain in the, about a two day period. But trust me, we need way more than that. Yeah, 2.9 right there. Um, I am, by the way, folks, I am on my way to the uh, Petrolia area uh, this morning. Going to go over here and look at uh, uh, some areas around the region south of Eureka, a little bit closer here to the epicenter of the 7.0 earthquake that struck here a couple days ago. Going to go over and talk to the local folks there in Petrolia. It's a very small, unincorporated area. I think they might have a little general store. Just going to go over there and talk to a few folks and, uh, you know, see what they may have felt over here, if they have any damage locally there in that little community. And, uh, you know, just talk to them, see if they got any earthquake alert systems and whatnot. But I will be over there uh, this morning uh, just doing a little bit of uh, on-site investigating here. Uh, I will go live. Uh, once I'm over here, pending they have decent service over there in, in the Petrolia area. Uh, if not, then they have to be somewhere around the Eureka area. But uh, I'm over, heading heading over there really shortly and uh, just do a little on-site uh, touring of any potential damage and uh, just seeing if these guys, you know, are aware of the potential of larger quakes out here. I'm sure they are. They dealt with... Uh, some sevens in the past, but you know, an 8.4 or a nine pointer out here across Cascadia is something these folks have not felt yet. So, um, obviously, uh, the earthquake uh, damage could be way higher. You got to be prepared for something, you know, potentially larger out here. Anyway, uh, look for that live stream. I'll be going live out there from my mobile device once I'm out in position uh, near the. Uh, uh, within the Petrolia area. And that's it uh, out, if I remember right here, it's just, just out here south of Eureka a little bit within this region. So I got a little drive ahead of me. It's going to be a nice day. No rain, no snow, nothing like that. So it should be nice and clear. But uh, we'll catch you guys out here in a few hours once we're back in the Eureka area. We'll see you guys then. Have a good day.